Well, hello again, Mark Muller, Dead on Live, for the big second installment installment of dissecting the dead. Uh, anyway, and it's certainly not due to the uh, at all due to the underwhelming response and request that I do more, um, but uh, more uh, I got plenty of time to do this, and, and uh, I I kind of enjoy it, you know, digging into uh, all this stuff. And uh, hopefully you do too. And, and again, let me know uh, if you're out there listening, share it with your friends or um, any requests. I got a bunch of songs. Today I'm going to look at Bertha. And again, in Dead on Live style, note for note, transcriptions from the album versions. I know Bertha has been done extensively in different tempos, different feels. Uh, indeed, the first time I saw it live, they did it halftime kind of... was at Roosevelt Stadium in August 6, 1974. Um, I remember when it started and running down the field, the band was starting. Anyway, um, so here we are, and uh, funny this song is so much faster uh, than people realize. I remember I, after transcribing this, going to sit, sit in with a very good uh, Grateful Dead cover band, and I was going to do Bertha, and... Uh, they said, okay, start it off. And I started, like, the skull and row. And, and as soon as I started, they were like, oh, no, 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 slower, slower. And, you know, sure enough, when the band came in, it was, like, way slower tempo. And the hardest part is uh, getting people to... You figure these guys were just cracking uh, live energy young, probably on some drugs, I don't know. But uh, this whole Bertha version is just kicking, isn't it, right? Uh, I, I love all the other ones, but um, th this is something special. And again, ingrained in my uh, little 13-year-old head of uh, this version. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, and uh, let's talk about the bass and the drums first. Let's talk about the drums. And it's funny, when I uh, get together with a bass player and a drummer who don't know the Grateful Dead or the song or the material, a quick explanation to them to them is I tell the bass player, you know, Motown, dun, 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 that bass line. I say, just do that through the whole song and you will be pretty close to what's going on. Because indeed, uh, looking into this, Phil pretty much stuck to that kind of Motown-y and now funny for the drummer and every drummer you know okay we'll keep it kicking for you we'll be smacking that two and four but i say okay no don't do that and um i'll, I'll play the examples billy does this wonderful thing very uh you won't notice it and again, I've played with drummers who've been playing this 30 years, and I point it out to them, and they, a guy looked at me in rehearsal and said, it's like I've never heard this song before. <laughs> it was so, you know, without tuning your ears and noticing these things. But anyway, so a drummer who's just going to lock down that two and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I point out, and I'll play the example, Billy, every fourth measure, He'll play two and four on the first, two, and the three. The fourth one, he'll drop the backbeat and then do a fill every time throughout the whole song. It, it, you want to hear it? Again, uh, here we go. This is, uh, let me get to the drum cue one. And I'll help, I'll count along here, see if you can follow. Uh, this is the first verse. I think he doesn't follow this uh, little thing the first time, but after that he does. Here you go. Measure one, coming up. Listen for the drums. Is 
Is that hysterical? You, you'd never know if you didn't listen. And, and you don't believe me? Let, let's look at another part of the song. Every fourth measure, he drops the backbeat and then plays a fill. Ready to race It's too cool. He's dancing back there. It's not the Grateful Dead without Billy doing that. That was the good old days. One drummer. Sorry, that's my own opinion. Uh, sorry, Mickey. Um, let's look at the bass real quick. Uh, Phil, where's my Phil cue? Now I I'm going to play. Uh, uh, tune your ears to the bass. Dum, 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 dum. Hopefully you can hear it on this phone thing. But um, he's really playing a Motown thing. But then he throws in some uh, very cool, let me uh, not solo it, sorry, little bass fills. And, and again, I, I would transcribe it. I would do a MIDI sample as he's playing it and uh, recreate the bass line into a MIDI language. And then my bass player, uh, the poor guy, would get the printed sheet music and read it down. Instant fill. Um, let's listen to some fill here. Holding down um, the uh, Motown feel. Ready to race Sorry, I had some pollution in here. Uh, okay, here we are. Just the track. Just the Grateful Dead here. Bass. It's a little fill. fill. He can't help himself. He had to put in some Phil fills. And of course, it ain't the end of Bertha unless Phil goes high. Check it out. And we are, uh, we're, it's just wonderful. So here's my uh, Phil bass. Uh, where is bass? Sorry. Here we go. I'm going to play, uh, I'll, I'll do that last bit with the Grateful Dead and Phil, uh, my uh, bass transcription, MIDI. Let's hear what he does all by himself with the click. Why not? You crazy son of a gun, you are. Crazy son of a gun. Here's that first one that we played, the other uh, verse. <laughs> about weird rhythm weird weird apostrophe d weird rhythm uh what did i get for bob again and this is a small production there's no uh, there's uh, merle saunders overdub some uh, organ after some b3 so really it's just a four-piece band live um, and the interplay between the two is just incredible let's see what bob does tune your ears and again, uh, Bob is over here on the right side, so I'm going to get rid of the stereo track and only pull up 
the bob heavy side, bring it to the middle, you know, take the pan to the middle. So right now we're just hearing bob, so it's going to stick out like uh, crazy. And uh, listen to this uh, wonderful stuff that he does here. It's almost like a lead guitar slash rhythm. Well, you know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, here's uh, crazy me with too much time on my hands. I go through and I learn it and I re-record it on top of this track. With headphones, you can really hear it. And, and, you know, it takes a little bit, but what the hell. Without the band, let me mute the right side, just me. Great. Um, and let's go to another little Bob uh, cool thing I highlight. Let's see what it is. Just the band. Just myself. like that one so when you hear when you're playing it on stage and you hear that the other guy doing that part it really uh, gets you pumped up um, this is me on top of it all right cool uh, one, another quick example of uh, a Bob thing is uh, he apparently mistakenly by accident hit his uh, pickup selector. So it went from the middle, that Bob middle, uh, whatever, to um, it went to the lead position. You'll hear the tone change. Right here. And it switches it back. So yeah, we're crazy. I had to uh, do that in the recreation, and I always ask the guitar player uh, to do it too. funny huh um so let me do that same thing uh we uh sussed out all the parts and let me um mute the dead that we just dissected and put the bass back in and uh you know i uh jerry uh i believe was playing his um sg at this point although and you can ask rick turner and even rick Turner, the guy who uh, is not sure, uh, the guitar builder who worked on Jerry's guitars, but we think, he thinks, that it's the peanut. The, to me, the Skull and Rose's Jerry tone is just beautiful. That syrupy, heavy, uh, it's just wonderful uh, of this record. Um, but it's not really clear which, you know, guitar. Uh, the, Rick Turner's peanut guitar was basically a... Uh, SG and SG that he uh, messed around with. But boy, whatever it is, um, it's just a wonderful tone. So I'm going to use, uh, because I don't have the peanut. I don't know if uh, Rick even knows where the peanut is. If anybody finds it, he's looking for it. Um, so let's uh, do Bertha. Let's see how we do. Um, yeah. I usually practice before a show and get it all together, so I'll make a lot of mistakes. But like I said, there's seven people watching right now, and, you know, that's okay. 
Let's see if I can do it without the click. Okay, I can do that. Nope, let's try again. See, it's faster than even I think it is. Well, I wish I could edit this so I don't look so dumb. Who cares? I'll try again. Thank you. 
1971, Skull and Roses. Uh, you notice the uh, bass fell out there. I just got tired of transcribing and said, play or whatever the hell you want at this point. Um, pretty good. And, and when is a wrong note a wrong note, a right note, you know? How about the Jerry? You gotta play that, right? Well, anyway, I enjoyed it. Thank you uh, for letting me get the news and current events off my mind for... Uh, 21 minutes and uh, peace and everything's going to be all right, right? So next song, I don't know. Hopefully I won't have uh, too much spare time to do this much longer. But in the meantime, please join me and uh, shout out if you're uh, at all watching. Uh, so I don't feel quite so lonely. Although I do have Mrs. Dead on live right down the hallway right now. I'm going to go give her a big hug and a kiss. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks.